Hi everyone, welcome back to this video on constraints. This is going to be the dynamic spring again for the second example. We're going to do a bit of a bounce on the ears right here to, uh, to follow with the movement that we've set up over here with our character. So for the ears, um, I don't necessarily want the entire thing to, to just kind of bounce. So again, I'm using a combination of several things. Um, for this one, I'm going to use something similar to what we've been using, the two-point constraints, but I'm going to use a three-point constraint uh, with the, um, the same functionality pretty much, except that you have an extra peg that you can attach to it. So I'll attach this over here on top of the ear, so controlling the entire thing, because right now I had many little pieces that were all split down um, with all the different parts of my ear. And I'm going to create three pegs. I'm going to detach them and attach them to this one right here. We've got one middle peg and the left peg. And I'm just going to reconnect all of those to the ears master for now, just to make sure that we have everything connected on the same place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and reposition the pivot point of these three pegs. And you need to make sure that the value that you insert is with one of these advanced animation tools right here because the three point constraint works with the peg pivot, therefore the one located in the peg. So I'm going to reposition my pivot points to all three corners of my ear. And this one is going to be at the tip right there. So we have a value for each of these. Now if I select one of these three pegs, I should be able to move just the tip right here. And this is the one that we're going to use along with the dynamic spring. So I'm going to bring that over, connect the dynamic spring through it, and now if I go back to my movement, that's pretty extreme, but it does the job. You can see that it drags back when my character moves forward and adds a pretty big bounce to it. So for your dynamic spring, you may want to adjust the values a little bit so that they're not so extreme. Um, and you can go in the layer properties uh, and adjust some of these. These are slightly different than what we found before. You can always look up what they do uh, in the documentation, but basically you will have uh, tension and inertia, tension being the translation tension from uh, one frame to another. Uh, so 100 would basically mean that the translation will move the whole distance. Zero will mean that none of it will be applied. So you can play around with those values a little bit um, in all three axes. You also have the scale, skew, rotate. Um, so again, you have the, uh, the parent that you can also uh, choose where it's going to stop applying. So play around with these. You also have the active factor if you want to easily just change just how much um, this is going to apply to your object. Right now it is a hundred percent of all of these values uh, that are being applied. If you want to reduce that number, you can always put it to maybe, I don't know if you want something really slight, have just a 20 and that's going to make it much, much smaller with hardly any bounce at the end because it's so subtle. Um, so adjust those numbers, play around with them, see what fits uh, for what you want. And this is going to change just how much it follows the exact same pattern as the hair. So you might want to do something a little bit different. All right, so that's pretty much it for constraints. I hope you guys had fun in those tutorials and I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with using those nodes. Take care.